Hello viewers, welcome to Runa, taking you through the story of A Level Physics Paper 2. And this video, we're going to go through the topic of optical instruments. So this video is today for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So before we proceed, let's first look at the course outline of this paper. So physics part 2 is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics, where two questions come from these topics, and the student has to answer one question. The second part is physical optics, where two questions come from these topics, and the student must answer one question. Then the third part is electrostatics and electricity, where three questions come from these topics. And the fourth part is magnetism and AC, where three questions come from these topics. So it is up to you, you can choose to, to write to get two from here and one from here, or two from here and one from here, to make the five questions. So on this platform, we are interested in the work examples but complete notes are available in this book called Mastering Aerial Physics Paper 2. It contains all topics, notes, work examples and trial questions for all topics in Physics Paper 2. So for copies of this book, contact the author on any of these two contacts. But a complete set of physics has three books. The first book is Physics 1, then Physics 2, and the Topical Question Bank. For Principal Mathematics, there are also three books, Math Part 1, Math Part 2, and the Topical Question Bank. For Subsidiary Math, it is only one book, and the rest are for all level. So for any of, the co of these copies, contact the author on any of these two contacts. So now we shall start our topic of optical instruments. So the number of optical instruments we are interested in are five. One is microscopes, then telescopes, then prism binoculars, and photographic camera or lens camera, and lastly, projection lantern. So before you look at the optical instruments one by one, we shall need some general terms and definitions which will cut across for all optical instruments. The first one is called a visual angle. So visual angle is the angle subtended by the object at the eye. Let's try to illustrate that. So we shall have an eye here, an aided eye. Then we have an object of height h. So this angle is what we call the visual angle. And D is the least distance of distinct vision. So yeah, it means that this object is assumed to be at near point, where this is the distance for the object from the eye at near point. So you come say that the eye can see the an object in its greatest details when it is placed at near point. So this word near point will be used more frequently. Near point, each time you say capital D, just know that the object is at near point. And the distance D from the eye to the near point is known as the least distance of distinct vision. So capital D means least distance of distant vision and it has a value of 25 centimeters from the from the normal eye. So it can be in centimeters or in millimeters. In millimeters it will be 250 millimeters. In centimeters it is 25 centimeters. In meters it is 0 0.25 meters. So any in the use is okay. But the common one is centimeters. So taking alpha to be a small angle 
measured in radians. So assuming that this alpha or this visual angle is a small angle and it is measured in radians, then this can then this one holds. It means that alpha approximates to tan alpha. But we know that tan alpha is opposite over adjacent, which is h over d. Note that this only holds if alpha is a small angle and measured in radians. And this formula shall be using it. We shall see how important it is. That was visual angle and least distance of distinct vision. Now shall go to the second term, which is called angular magnification. Remember, we have been used to linear magnification because in curved mirrors, in lenses, we are using the word linear magnification. But when it comes to optical instruments, we use the word angular magnification or magnifying power. So it is a little different from linear magnification. Now, what is angular magnification? So this is the ratio of the angle subtended by the final image of the aided eye to the angle subtended by the object at the unaided eye. So here we are using the word unaided and aided. Aided means we are using the you are using an optical instrument to view an object. And unaided means you, are, you, you don't use any optical instrument. You use your normal eye. Therefore, capital M. So previously, linear magnification was small m. We are using small l, m if you are keen. But now when it comes to angular magnification, we have to use capital M. So it will be equal to alpha prime, which is the angle subtended by the aided eye, over alpha, which is the angle subtended by the unaided eye. So this one will also be used more frequently, and we shall see that when we start looking at each optical instrument at a time. Then we also need a third term, which is very common, is what we call the eye ring, or the exit pupil. So this is the image of the objective lens. So shall let's see what these ones are. Objective lens as formed by the eyepiece lens. The eye rings and the eye rings position is the best position for an observer to place the eye when using an optical instrument. So what we are interested in is this word that it is the image of the objective lens formed by the eyepiece lens. So it means that the eyepiece lens is the lens which will be used and objective will be assumed to be the position of the object. Then you can use the thin lens formula to obtain the image distance which will be the position of the eye ring. But you shall see that when you look at each optical instrument at a time. So now we shall start with microscopes. We are, we are going to look at them in order. Microscope, telescope, and so on. So we shall start with microscopes. So microscopes are optical instruments used for viewing near objects. Near objects means, remember we said near point, the distance should be 25 centimeters. So when this is 25 centimeters, that, that will be a near object or less. And there are two types of microscopes. The first one is called a simple microscope, what we call, what we commonly known as a magnifying glass. Then the second one is called a compound microscope. So yeah, look at both of them. Let's start with a simple microscope. So this microscope consists of a single convex lens held from an object at a distance less than or equal to the focal length of the lens. Why? Because when it is less than the when it is greater than the focal length, then the image will be real. 
yet we want the image to be virtual and we want the image to be upright. So when the distance of the object is greater than the focal length, then the image is inverted and real. Yet for us, we want erect images. So for you to get an erect image, which is magnified, the image object distance must be less than the focal length of that lens, as we shall see in the red diagram. So when in normal use, the final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision from the eye. So here we shall be using this word frequently because the microscope can be in normal use or not in normal use. So these words will be used more frequently. A microscope in normal use, a microscope not in normal use, a telescope in normal use, a telescope not in normal use. You can use the word normal use or use the word normal adjustment. Any of the two is okay. So on the other hand, when not in normal use, it means the final image will be formed at infinity. So in normal use, final image is at the near point, while not in normal use, final image is at infinity. That is why here we said less than or equal to the focal length of the lens. So when it is equal to the focal length, then it is not in normal use. When it is less than the focal length, it means it is in normal use. So let's start with a simple microscope in normal use. So you shall remember that in normal use, the image formed by the microscope is at the near point or the least distance of distinct vision from the eye. And the object must be placed at a distance from the lens which is less than the focal length of the lens. And in that case, the image formed will be upright. It will be virtual and also magnify. In other words, it will, the lens will act as a magnifying glass. And that is what we are interested in. So suppose a convex lens L is used as a magnifying glass to view the same object. It means that an erect, virtual and magnified image is obtained when the object is nearer to L than its focal length and the observer moves the lens until the image I is formed at near point. Remember, normal use, the image must be formed at near point. So you keep on adjusting the object distance until an upright virtual and magnified image is formed at near point of the near point from the eye or from the optical instrument. So with that knowledge, you can now illustrate our ray diagram. We shall have a convex lens. Then we shall put up an object in front of this principal focus. Then we shall remember the rules for drawing ray diagrams of converging lenses. One is that a ray parallel to the principal axis is refracted to pass through the principal focus. So it appears to come from the side. Then two, a ray through the optical center is undeviated. So it is just a straight line. And it appears to come from that side. So this intersection will be the position of the image, which is virtual and upright. And with the height H1. Object had the height H. So this will now be our alpha prime because we are using a microscope to view this image. So we shall remember that. So this assumption must never be forgotten. For small angles expressed in radians, alpha prime will be equal to approximate to tan alpha prime, which is so tan alpha prime is equal to opposite 
over adjacent which is d that's why you see here h1 over d tan alpha i think we already saw it from the definition of visual angle that it is equal to h over d that means that angular magnification is alpha prime over alpha then you shall come and substitute for alpha prime divided by substitution for alpha this division can become multiplication when this one becomes a reciprocal and in that case d cancels and you remain with h1 over h but we know that h1 over h is the linear magnification produced by the lens remember in linear magnification the first definition was image height over object height so this h1 will be the image height and this is the object height meaning h1 over h is the same as linear magnification produced by the lens and we saw that the third definition for linear magnification was m equal to v over f minus one so in this case our v which is the image distance is d that is why you see d there then f is here and one is there so that means that if you are not given heights of the final and in, uh, of the object and the image it means you can get angular magnification using this formula okay so with that we can go through this it says if the magnifying glass has a focal length of two centimeters and the least distance of distant vision is 25 centimeters find the angular magnification of this microscope in normal use so in normal use you have to remember the formula that it is d over f minus one but remember that d is negative because the image is virtual f was 2 and then there is this one so when i use a calculator i'll come up with negative 13.5 as my angular magnification then question 2 says calculate the angular magnification produced by a magnifying glass of focal length 5 centimeters adjusted such that an image is formed at a distance of 25 centimeters in front of it so still we shall do the same let's code the formula substitute and get the output so that was a simple microscope in normal use what if it is not in normal use it means that the image must be formed at infinity the final image so you're coming and say that when the microscope simple microscope is not in normal use the image formed by the microscope is at infinity then the object is placed at the principal focus of the convex lens so you come and illustrate that. So you get our object placed exactly at the principal focus. Then you remember the rules for ray diagrams. A ray par to the principal axis is refracted to pass through the principal focus. So it appears to come from that side then two a ray through the optical center is undeviated and appears to come from that side so i think i realize that these lines never meet meaning the image is at infinity so this will be alpha prime this will be the focal length of the lens So for small angles expressed in radians, alpha prime is approximate to tan alpha prime, which is opposite over adjacent, which is h over f. This one, we already derived it from the definition of visual angle. 
That means that angular magnification can be got by substituting for alpha prime and alpha. And in the end, we'll come up with D over F. So hope you see the difference. The, when the microscope was in normal use, the magnification was D over F minus 1. But now when the microscope is not in normal use, the angular magnification is D over F. Okay, so we shall go through question one. It says a thin converging lens of focal length 10 centimeters is used as a magnifying glass. Find the angular magnification when the image is at infinity. Infinity means it is not in normal use. So I'll come and remember that not in normal use formula is D over F. So substitute for D, substitute for F to come up with the angular magnification. So that was simple microscopes. What about compound microscopes? So compound microscopes consist of two converging lenses. Remember, simple microscope, it was a single converging lens. But when it comes to compound microscope, it is two converging lenses. And one lens is called an objective which has a shorter focal length, F0. And the second one is called the eyepiece, which has a long focal length. So the objective is one which is closer to the object, and the eyepiece is the one which is closer to the eye of the, of the observer. So we shall be using those words more frequently, objective lens, eyepiece lens. And when in normal use, the final image is formed at the least distance of distant vision from the eye. When not in normal use, the final image is formed at infinity. So let's start with the one compound microscope in normal use. So in normal use or in normal adjustment, the final image is formed at the near point at the least distance of this vision, capital D, from the eye. And that means that the object is placed at a distance greater than the focal length F0 of the objective. So the objective and eyepiece are arranged coercially, which is what it means, to each so that the image I1 formed by the objective lies between the principal focus Fe of the eyepiece and the eyepiece itself. So let's try to illustrate that. So we shall have two converging lenses. One is the objective, another one is the eyepiece. This will be the focal length of the objective sorry, principal focus, and this will be the principal focus of the eyepiece. So you have an object, finite object of height h. Then we shall use the rules for drawing rays for lenses. So a ray parallel to the principal axis is refracted to pass through the principal focus. Then a ray through the optical center is undeviated. So this will be the position of the first image I1. Then this eyepiece also refracts the rays. And this ray will appear coming from this side. Similarly, this will appear coming from this side. It is because the object, this one I1 acts as the object to the eyepiece. And it is between the principal focus and the eyepiece so the ray so an image will be formed should be magnified and virtual at point i2 and to be formed at near point that is why there is capital d here then the visual angle will be drawn got by joining a line from here to the top of this image first image up to here 
and that should be alpha prime. Then from here T is V0, from here T is UE. So this V0 plus UE gives us the separation of the two lenses. So for small angles measured in radians, this assumption is needed. Alpha prime approximates to tan alpha prime, which will be H2 over D. So let's see where it comes from. So this one is a right angled triangle. So alpha prime is equal to opposite over adjacent. Then this one was already seen from the definition for visual angle. Therefore, angular magnification is alpha prime over alpha, substitute for alpha prime, substitute for alpha, and simplify to come up with H2 over H. But we know that h2 over h is equal to h2 over h1 times h1 over h. We have done that by introducing an innocent expression of h1 both in the numerator and the, in the denominator. Now this h2 is the image. This is the image for the due to eyepiece and is the object due to eyepiece. The near image due to objective, object due to objective. Therefore, this will be the linear magnification produced by the eyepiece and this will be the linear magnification produced by the objective. So this, I think, remember this formula V over F minus 1. So for the eyepiece, image distance is D. For the objective, image distance is V naught. So when I substitute those two here, I'll come up with my expression for angular magnification provided the compound microscope is in normal adjustment then separation vu v naught plus ue so with that we shall go through some questions question one came from uneb 2019 paper 2 question 2b and it says a microscope has an objective of focal length 10 centimeters and eyepiece of focal length 20 centimeters if the distance between the objective and the eyepiece is 20 centimeters, calculate the magnifying power of the microscope. So for the eyepiece, F is that, V is that, you can get U. And U it will be given by that. But separation is V0 plus U. I think remember that. Therefore, I can get V0, which is this. Therefore, I'll code the formula for angular magnification, substitute for D, Fe, V0. Now, V0 is 8 over 9, which is this. Divide by F0, which is 10, to give you 0 0.25. Then question 2 came from your neb of 2017 paper 2 question 2 e and says a compound microscope consists of two thin lenses an objective of focal length 1 and the eyepiece of focal length 5. The objective forms an image of forms an image of an object placed in front of it at a point 16 centimeters away. So this will be the object distance. If the final image formed is at near point, calculate Roman 1, the separation of the lenses, and Roman 2, the magnifying power. So considering the objective, I know U, I know F, I can get V using the thin lens formula. So V naught will be that. Then for the IF piece, I know V, I know F, I can get U using the thin lens formula. Therefore, I'll add the two to get the separation they wanted. That was Roman 1. Roman 2, they wanted magnifying power. So you code the formula 
substitute and get the output. Alternatively, you can get it from this formula because this is the same as linear magnification and you still get the same answer. That only works for compound microscope in normal adjustment. Now we shall go to what we call eye ring of a compound microscope in normal adjustment. So I think you remember that from the definition that eye ring is the image of the objective formed by the eyepiece. That is what we need. So let's try to illustrate that. So you have the objective, then also the eyepiece. Then you shall have an object, then ray part of the principal axis, refracted to pass through the principal focus. Another one passes through the optical center and deviated. Another one through the principal focus is refracted parallel to the principal axis. So this will be the position of the first image. Then after that they will be refracted by the eyepiece. To be parallel. Uh, so the image will be formed. And this will be the position of the eyepiece to collect all the light rays. So from this definition, that image of the objective formed by the eyepiece means that the we are going to consider this as the lens and this as the object and this as the image say so that this is now the image distance and this is the object distance and the, this ip is the focal length so we shall come and conclude that the position of the iron v can be obtained using the formula using the thinness formula this where u is the separation of the lenses and f is the principal focal is the focal length of the eyepiece and v is the position of the eye ring so with that we can go through these questions question one came from 2022 quest paper 2022 paper two this is part two paper two question 2e and it says edited meaning in that question, they only ask for the disk separation, but for us to add on the position of the eye ring. So two lenses of focal length 1.2 and 4 centimeters are arranged to form a microscope in normal adjustment. If the objective is placed 1.5 centimeters in front of the objective lens, find Roman 1 the distance between the two lenses and Roman 2, the position of the eye ring. So for the objective, we know F, we know U, we can get V. So V0 will be that. Then for the eyepiece, we know F, we know V, we can get U. So UE will be that. Therefore, separation is good by adding the two. And that is Roman 1. Roman 2, they want the position of the eye ring. So the separation will now act as the object distance. So for the position of the eye ring, object distance is the separation and focal length is that of the eyepiece. Then you can get the value of V. And that will be the position of the eye ring they wanted. Then question 2 came from Uneb 2000, paper 2, question 1D. Edited meaning is only what a separation but added on position of the eye ring. So the objective of a compound microscope has a focal length of 2 cm while that of the eyepiece has a focal length of 5 cm. An object is placed at a distance of 2.5 cm in front of the objective 
the distance of the eyepiece from the objective is adjusted so that the final image is 25 from the eyepiece. Find Roman 1, the distance between the objective and the eyepiece, and Roman 2, the position of the eye ring. So for the objective lens, we know U, we know F, we can get V from the thin lens formula. Then for the eyepiece, we know V, we know F, we can get U. And therefore, we can get the separation by adding the 2. The Roman 2 position of the eye ring means that object distance is the separation. And focal length is that of the eyepiece. So come and use thinness formula to get the value of V. And that would be the position they wanted. So now we shall go to telescopes. Telescopes, these are also optical instruments used for viewing distant objects. So ob microscopes were used for viewing near objects, telescopes for viewing distant objects. And when in normal use, the image formed is at infinity. For microscope, when in normal use, image was formed at near point, and when not in normal use, image was formed at infinity. This is the opposite for telescopes. For telescopes, when in normal use, image is at infinity, and when not in normal use, images at near point. So there are two types of telescopes. We have refracting telescopes and also astronomical, sorry, and reflecting telescopes. So we are interested in refracting telescopes and also in refracting telescopes we are interested in astronomical and Galilean because those are the ones which have calculations. The rest can be found in the book which I told you to buy. So let's start with astronomical telescope in normal adjustment. So in normal adjustment, the image is formed at infinity. So we shall try to draw a ray diagram for such a setting. So we have the objective and the eyepiece. First we will have distant rays from a distant object, or parallel rays, to be refracted. The one through the optical center is undeviated, but this one, is also, which is not through the optical center, will be refracted. Now because these are parallel rays, they will form an image at the principal focus of the objective, which is this. So this is F0, frequency, focal length of the objective, focal length of the eyepiece. That is one. So we said because these are parallel, they form an image at the principal focus of the objective. Then two, because we want the final image to be at infinity, it implies that this image is at the principal focus of the eyepiece. That is why you see this word F0, Fe, meaning that this is the same position for the principal focus of the objective and also for the eyepiece. Now, because it is there, the final image will be at infinity. Now, this line is drawn to help us draw our parallel lines. They should be, the rays from here refracted must be parallel to this line. So, this is what I'm meaning. This ray, it is refracted and to be parallel. As you can see, it, this and this are parallel. The same applies to all the other two rays. Even this one will be parallel, as you can see it. And this will also be parallel, as you can see it. So the final image will be formed at infinity. So this will be the visual angle alpha, alpha, and this is alpha prime. So for small angles measured in radians, alpha prime is that, we already know this, 
because this is a right angle triangle. So opposite over adjacent. Then alpha here, opposite over adjacent. Therefore, substitute into formula of angular magnification and simplify to come up with F0 over Fe as the expression for angular magnification for astronomical telescope in normal adjustment. And the separation, as you can see it here, is F0 plus Fe. So with that, we can go through these questions. Question 1 came from your neighbor. 2004 paper 2 questions 1 c and says find the separation of the eyepiece and objective of an astronomical telescope of magnifying power 20 and in normal adjustment and in normal adjustment if its eyepiece has a focal length of 5 so first of all, you know the formula for mag angular magnification, make F0 the subject, to come up with M, Fe to give you 100 as F0. Then from there, you can now get the separation they want, which is F0 plus Fe to give you 105. Then question 2 says an astronomical telescope has an objective of focal length 100 and an eyepiece of focal length 10. If the lenses are arranged in such a way that the final image is formed at infinity, calculate Roman 1, the magnifying power of the telescope, and Roman 2, the separation of the objective and the eyepiece. So for Roman 1, we know mag angular magnification is F0 over Fe, so substitute to get this. That was Roman 1. Roman 2, they want separation. F0 plus Fe. And that would be the separation they wanted. Now we shall go to I-ring for an astronomical telescope. Like we all know, I-ring is the image of the objective formed by the eyepiece. So the concept will be the same as the one for microscopes whereby the object distance will be the separation of the two lenses and the image distance will be the position of the eye ring and the focal length will be the, that of the eyepiece so we shall get power rays which will be refracted so that will be the first then the second one and the third one So that will give us the first image I1 at the principal focus so that the the second Im the final image is formed at infinity. So we shall have those refractions. And this will be the position of the I ring at a distance v from the eyepiece. That was still we shall use the, the thinness formula to come up with the position of the eye ring, where u is the separation, f is that of the eyepiece, and v is the position of the eye ring they want. So th in microscopes, it, we are only ask for position of the eye ring, but in telescopes, they can also ask for the diameter of the eye ring. So when that is asked, you should remember this relation. Okay, so question one came from your name, 2015, paper two, question one D, and it says, the objective of an astronomical telescope in normal adjustment has a diameter of 150 millimeters and focal length of 3 meters. Note that this is millimeters and this is meter. The eyepiece has a focal length of 25 millimeters. Calculate Roman 1, the position of the eye ring, and Roman 2, the diameter of the eye ring. 
so we know this that's what is given then we can get so we shall ignore this assumption because it is already known no adjustment that means that capital M is F naught over F E which is this So for the position of the I ring, separation is this, which is this, and focal length is that. So V can be got from thinness formula, and that will be the position of the I ring. Then for moment two, the diameter, we know that this we know this relation, which we saw in the note. So you can come and substitute and get the diameter of the eye ring which they wanted. Then question 2 says an astronomical telescope in normal adjustment has a magnifying power of 20. If its eyepiece has a focal length of 5 centimeters, find Roman 1 the separation of its eyepiece and objective. And Roman 2, the position of the I ring, the position of the I ring. So for Roman 1, that's what we know. We shall come and code the formula for angular magnification. Make F0 the subject, and that will be the value of F0. Therefore, separation is given by this formula to give you 105. Then for moment 2, position of the I ring, separation is already known, is 105, focal length is known, we can now get V. And that will be the position of the I ring. So that now we shall go to astronomical telescope, not in normal adjustment. So the one which was in normal adjustment, the image was formed at infinity. That means that when it is not in normal adjustment, the image is formed at near point. So we shall now draw our red diagram for such a setting. So we have an objective and the eyepiece. We shall then get the power rays refracted the one through the optical center and deviated then a third power ray which is refracted to form an image at this point okay now for you to form um, an a magnified image this image remember this image i want acts as the object of the eyepiece Previously, for normal adjustment, the image was formed at the principal focus of the eyepiece. Now, in this case, it is formed between the principal focus and the eyepiece itself. In that way, the image, will, in that way, this eyepiece will be acting as a magnifying glass. Therefore, they will be refracted to form a magnified image. So, elongate that refracted to appear coming from that point, refracted to appear coming from that point. And that will be the position of the final image, which will be virtual and magnified. So I'll have to measure the, this will be the near point. This angle, this should be capital D. Then the visual angle is measured by joining the line from here up to here. And that will be alpha prime. This is alpha and this is alpha. So we know that F0 and we also know this as UE. So for small angles measured in radians, alpha prime is that. I think we now know where they come from. The angular magnification is good by substituting for alpha prime and alpha and simplify to get this. So 1 over UE can be got using the thinness formula. 
then the separation is f not over ue. So I think we see the difference. Angular magnification is f not divided by ue. Then separation is f not plus ue. So with that we can go through some questions. Question one came from UNIP. 2007 paper 2 question 2b and says the objective and eyepiece of an astronomical telescope have focal lengths of this and that respectively find the separation of two lenses if the final image is 25 from the eyepiece so for the eyepiece we hold we have f and v meaning you can get u Then for the objective, focal length is that, therefore, separation can be got by adding. And that would be the answer they wanted. Then question 2 came from Reneb, 1996 part 2, question 2. C and T is added meaning. In the question, they only ask for separation, but now for us to add it on the magnifying power. So it says... An astronomical telescope consists of two thin converging lenses of focal length 110 respectively. If the final image of a distant object is virtual and is 20 cm from the eyepiece, find Roman 1, the separation of the lenses, and Roman 2, the magnifying power of the instrument. So for the eyepiece, we know F and V, we can get U. We know the focal length of the objective, meaning separation can now be good. Then for magnifying power, 1 over, remember magnifying power is 1 over U, E times F. 1 over U, E is this, and F naught is 100. So I'll come and say that. Magnifying power is 1 over UE times F0. 1 over UE is 3 over 20. F0 is 100 to give you 15. So now we shall go to Galilean telescopes. We have been looking at astronomical telescopes. Now we shall go to Galilean telescope. So for astronomical telescope, there, it involves two converging lenses. But when it comes to a Galilean telescope, one is converging and the other one is diverging. So the one which is converging is the objective lens. And the one which is diverging is the eyepiece lens. That is one. Two, the one which is objective has a longer focal length, while the eyepiece has a shorter focal length. So just like it was for astronomical telescopes, even in Galilean, we have Galilean in normal adjustment and also Galilean in not in normal adjustment. So let's start with Galilean in normal adjustment. So one is that the two lenses are arranged in such a way that their principal foci are at the same point. Okay, then two, that in that the, in normal adjustment, the final image formed by the diverging lens is erect. For astronomical telescopes, the final, Im the final image was inverted, but now this one is erect and at infinity. So let's try to draw a red diagram for such a setting. We shall have a converging lens, which is the objective, and also a diverging lens, which is the eyepiece. Then we shall have power rays, because rays are from a distant object, will be refracted. Then the one through the optical center is undeviated. Then the third power ray is also refracted. Okay. So in absence of this lens, in absence of this eyepiece, 
the rays would have pro continued and to f up to that point. So that would be the position of the first image. And it is formed at the principal focus because remember we want one we want the final image to be at infinity meaning it has to be the object of the eyepiece must be at the principal focus of the eyepiece that is one two we said that when in normal adjustment both the principal focus of the objective and the principal focus of the eyepiece are at the same point so if f is here it means that even f o is there okay so this is the first image then because of this diverging lens the rays will be diverged so we draw this line like i told you for astronomical this line helps you to draw parallel rays so it is not a ray it is just a line that means that from here they will be diverged in such a way that they are parallel to this line as you can see this line is parallel to this and even this line will be parallel to this and also the third line will be third ray will be parallel to this line drawn that is one importance of drawing this line another importance is for measuring the visual angle for the while using the telescope so that will be the final image at infinity and up and erect. Then this will be the visual angle when using the instrument. This one when not using when using unaided eye, and also this one when using unaided eye. So the distance from your tier is the focal length of the objective, and from your tier the focal length of the eyepiece. That means that the separation will be F0 minus Fe, where F is the magnitude, is in magnitude form. So for small angles measured in radians, alpha is that, and tan alpha is that, I believe by now you know. Then you can substitute in the formula for angular magnification. Alpha prime, alpha, then simplify to get this. So what does that mean? It means that as long as it is a telescope, it means that in normal adjustment, the formula will be the same for all. Astronomical, Galilean, they have the same formula, one in normal adjustment, that is one, two. Astronomical and Galilean have the same formula when not in normal adjustment, as we shall see. So I think we realize that this formula was the same formula we got for astronomical telescope in normal adjustment. What will differ will be the separation. The separation is equal to the magnitude. Is equal to the, the separation of the, is equal to the difference in the magnitude of their focal lengths. So here I put magnitude sign because focal length of a diverging lens is usual is negative. So I put magnitude to make it positive. What about a Galilean not in normal adjustment? So when not in normal adjustment, the final image is formed at, the, at a near point. So I shall make a red diagram for such a setting. So we have the objective and the eyepiece, then rays will be refracted the first ray then the second one and deviated because it is going through the pre optical center then the third ray will be refracted so in absence of the eyepiece the rays will proceed to converge at that point and that will be the position of the first image i1 but because of this lens the ray will be refracted further diverged further so we shall to be refracted to appear coming from that point this one also refracted to appear coming from that point this one also refracted to appear coming from that point so this will be the position of the final image which is upright 
So we need to measure the visual angle, which will be alpha prime. And this will be the visual angle for unaided eye. So from here, T is the, is the focal length of the objective. That is the image distance, which is D, because it is at near point. Then this will be the object distance for the eyepiece. So in this case, the separation will be F0 minus UE. Remember, for astronomical, normal adjustment, it was F0 plus FE. For Galilean, it was F0 minus FE. Then for astronomical, not in normal adjustment, the separation was F0 plus UE. Now for Galilean, the separation not in normal adjustment is F0 minus UE. I think I can try to see the relation between the two. So for small angles measured in radians, still alpha prime is that. So here it is UE. You can change that. It is UE, not U. So substitute for alpha prime, which is H over UE, and alpha, which is H over F0, to come up with this expression. I think we realize that it is the same expression as for astronomical, not in normal adjustment. So UE can be got from using the thinness formula for IPs and the separation is got by the F0 minus UE magnitude. So with that, we shall go through these questions. Question 1 came from UNEB of 1999, paper 2, question 2C, Roman 2, and it says, A convex lens of focal length 60 cm is arranged coercially with a diverging lens of focal length 5 cm to view a distant star. Calculate the magnifying power obtained if the image of the star is formed at a distance of 25 centimeters in front of the eyepiece. So for the eyepiece, we know V, we know F, we can get U. Actually, what we need is 1 over U because magnifying power is 1 over U ti UE times F0. So magnifying power is 1 over U times F0. 1 over U is this. F0 it was given as this. So that's what they wanted. Then question 2. A Galilean telescope has an objective lens of focal length 12 cm and an eyepiece of focal length 5 cm. It's focused on a distant object so that the final image seen by the eye appears to be situated at a distance 30 cm from the eye lens. Determine Roman 1 the angular magnification and Roman 2 the separation of the lenses. So for the eye lens, we know F, we know V, we can get U. Then for the objective, we know that therefore angular magnification will be 1 over UE times F0, which is negative 2. That is Roman 1. Then for the separation, we shall be F0 over F0 minus UE. UE is negative 6, but magnitude will be 6. So we'll come up with 6 as the separation of the lenses. So now that was telescopes, now we shall go to prism binoculars. So a prism binocular consists of an astronomical telescope containing two right-angled prisms between the objective and the eyepiece. And the purpose of these two right-angled prisms is to invert the image and obtain a final erect image formed at the principal focus Fe of the eyepiece. So I think you realize, you remember for astronomical, the final image was inverted and magnified. 
What if you want to make it erect? So in this case, we use a prism binoculars to help us to get an erect image. So we shall now draw, make a sketch of how the prisms are arranged and we see how they can for get, a, get an erect image from an inverted image. So this is prism A, this is prism B. So rays from rays will from the objective will be in the, in that form. We are using two arrows to show how they can how the inverted image becomes erect. So this if this is the tail and this is the top the head to imply that now for now this is the tail and this is the head, the one with the one arrow. When they reach here, there will be there will be total internal reflection to meet the second reflect, reflecting surface. Then from here, they will again be reflected totally to meet the sec, to meet the second prism, this face. So this face, I think you see now, it is still in. It was in this form. Now it is also still in that form. But when it reaches this one, there will be reflection. This will go down. Then there will be reflection. Now here I think realize what was the tail. It was in this form. But now the double arrows are down and the single arrow is up, meaning it is now in this form. So in that way, it has achieved the purpose of inverting. It was uh, it was inverted but now it is upright so that is the purpose of the prism binoculars so in normal adjustment we shall still use the same formula as for a telescope f0 over fe so with that we will go through these questions question one came from your neighbor 1999 paper 2 question 1c and says in a pair of prism binoculars, the optical path from the objective to the eyepiece is 50. The eyepiece has a focal length of 2.5 centimeters. Find the magnifying power in normal adjustment. So separation, remember, is F0 plus Fe, meaning F0 can be got. Then from there we shall remember that magnifying power is F0 over Fe, so substitute for F0 and Fe to give you 19 as the answer. So that was prism binoculars. Now we shall go to photographic camera or lens camera. So this consists of a lens system, light sensitive film at the back and a focusing arrangement. So we shall draw a diagram to try to illustrate a photographic camera. So we shall have this as the lens system, this as the aperture, this as the focusing ring, film spool, film, light proof box, shutter, diaphragm. So the diaphragm controls the amount of light entering the camera. Then the lenses focus a real image of the object on the film, so image is focused at this point. So lenses means we can use the formulas for thin lens formula. Then the film has a light sensitive chemicals on which the image is stored. So my interest is that the real image is formed on the film. So each time you see the film, just know that say that's where the position of the image is. 
and with that you can go through this question question one a camera has a focal length of 50 millimeters if it can form images of the objects from infinity down to 1.5 meters from the lens calculate the distance through which it must be possible to move the lens so we know the focal length is this so in, mit in millimeters you can change to meters it will be 0 0.05 meters and the object distance is 1.5 meters therefore using the thin lens i can get the value of v and therefore the distance moved will be the difference between the image i've got and those when the object distance is this and f because f is the position of the image for uh, for rays coming from infinity then question two says a camera lens consists of two simple lenses a convex lens of focal length three centimeters one centimeter in front of the concave lens of focal length this how far behind the concave lens must the sensitive film be placed remember film is where the image is stored be placed to give a clear photograph of an object 10 centimeters in front of the concave lens then roman 2 what is the magnification produced by the lens system so here we shall need to make a sketch so for the convex lens we have v, we have f, we can get v using the thin lens formula and v will be 4.2857 and now that we have v1 we can get, we can draw our red diagram then we can locate our object then raise from the object to meet the converging lens they will be refracted and in absence of this lens they will have converged at that point but because of this lens they are refracted further to meet at this point i2 therefore the separation we know it was one centimeter then the object distance we know it was 10 and the Im image distance using the converging lens was this meaning the balance will be this minus 1 to give you this and the final image distance will be v2 because we do not eat meaning we have to calculate it so for the concave lens u2 is that f is that we don't know v so we can get it using thin lens formula therefore v2 will be that that means that the sensitive film must be placed this centimeters behind the concave lens to give a clear photograph Then Roman 2, Roman 2, they want the magnification. So effective magnification of two lens systems is the product. So V1 over U1 times V2 over U2 to give me 0 0.9474 as the answer they wanted. So now we shall go to what we call a projection lantern. I'll make an illustration so we have a concave mirror we have a quasi lamp as a source of light strong source of light then we have these condensing lenses we have a slide a projection lens and a screen so this one produces light in all directions as you can see it here but the ones which meet the concave mirror will be refracted along the same path 
as you can see here meaning that all the rays will go to this to, to will meet the condensing lens and at the condensing lens there will be refraction in that direction then at this point there will also be refraction so here it means that the optical center meaning it will be undeviated so that means that the object here will be focused here on the screen the image will be at the screen and to be you know this was up inverted this will be erect so what we need to realize is that the distance between the slide and the projection lens is what we call the object distance and the distance between the projection lens and the screen is what we call the image distance then from there you can use the lens thin lens formula so the quartz lamp is placed at with this filament at the center of curvature with the concave reflector then the concave reflector prevents loss of light light from the source is reflected back onto the condenser which concentrates it onto the film the region where the slide is to be placed the slide is now the position of the object that's what i have to remember and the screen is the position of the image so that means that the formula for the formulas for linear magnification of lenses can all be used but there's one more which will be added that is linear magnification is equal to area of the image over area of the object remember we are using height of the image over height of object but now we shall use area of the image over area of the object now we put square root because we want to get linear this alone is what we call the area magnification meaning linear magnification is good by getting the square root also shall remember that this is also vital this, this is also m m is equal to that so we shall with that we shall go through these questions question one came from your neb 2020 paper 2 question 1d and says the focal length of a projector lens is this if a magnification of 300 is required, find the distance of the screen from the lens. That is now the image distance to the distance between the slide and the lens. That is now the object distance. So you first get the image distance from this formula, make V the subject, you come up with V as that. Then from this formula, make you the subject will come up with you as this, and that's what they wanted. Then question two came from your NEP of November 1998, paper two, question 2D, and it says, a projector projects an image of area this onto a screen placed five meters from the projection lens. If the area of the image of the object slide is this, calculate Roman 1, the focal length of the projection lens and Roman 2, the distance of the slide from the lens. So linear magnification is square root of area of image over area of object. So area of image and area of object convert to meters to give you this therefore you remember that linear magnification is given by that make f the subject you come up with that as the value of f then roman 2 distance between the slide of the slide from the lens that is u so from this make you the subject you come up with the value they want So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and 
the remainder the next video will be on physical optics or what we call waves. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that you can all benefit as a family